<laughs> a state in which you feel absolutely comfortable, hundred percent comfort, that is meditation. Unfortunately, we think meditation is effort. Somebody standing in one leg, they think, oh, they are doing meditation. <laughs> the top of a rock stand on a leg, morning till night. Oh, so and so is meditating. Only and only in meditation can you ever feel very, very, very comfortable. Your body may be comfortable in a situation. You may be sitting in a nice sofa or lying on a very good bed, soft bed. But the mind will toss around. Mind is all in topsy-turvy. Anxiety, anxiousness, sorrow, dejection. Where is the comfort? <coughs> you may be even watching or observing an entertainment program. No doubt entertainment gives you a little comfort, but not really that total comfort. Your mind may be at rest, but your soul is restless. Soul is hungry. Soul is hungry for something more. Don't you see this? Just open your eyes and see around. People who have wealth are equally uncomfortable as those who do not have. Isn't it? Rather even more. People who have fame are equally at discomfort, are even more at discomfort than those who are not known. Isn't it? People who have power or any position, they are also at discomfort, disease. Like those who do not have. <coughs> then where is the comfort? A bachelor is this uncomfortable, so also is a married person, a family man, equal, even more uncomfortable, <laughs> discomfort. <laughs> Isn't it? Open your eyes and look around. Who is at peace? Who is at comfort? Those who have all sorts of habit are also at discomfort and those who do not have any of those habits. No? Isn't it? A seeker is at discomfort, so also a non-seeker. Then what to do with this mind which is so at unease? Ha, huh, two things are needed. One is practice, another is dispassion. <coughs> dispassion means what? You say, right now. I am not interested to see anything, I am not interested to hear anything, I am not interested to taste anything, smell anything or feel anything. This moment I want to be at rest. 
my mind is tired running after this or that. Now I want to be at peace. This moment I am not going to engage myself in any of this activity for a while, twenty minutes, half an hour. This very thought brings you to the center, that is dispassion. As soon as this happens, your meditation practice gains momentum. And in meditation, you calm down. You sit comfortably and become one with the infinity. This is very precious. A few moments of such stillness can transform life, can change our nervous system, change our attitude of looking at things. That can bring so much happiness, so much joy, which nothing else can give us. Nothing at all. It's very precious. Many people do meditation. Thousands around the world are meditating, but they do not understand this element of dispassion. Arjuna tells Krishna, Oh Krishna, it's so difficult to have this mind calm down. Especially when I sit for meditation, all sorts of thoughts come. I am bombarded with thoughts. That to what? Nothing precious comes. All unwanted, unnecessary, rubbish, garbage comes up in the mind. What to do? Krishna agrees. I agree. But you know, with knack and skill, with dispassion and practice, it becomes calm. Very quickly. It's not just Arjuna's case, the case of thousands around the world, everybody. So a decision to say, okay, I am not going to see or smell or think or hear anything about anything now, just I am resting. Few moments. Hmm? Such a determination <coughs> deepens the practice. And the practice brings this passion. They both, they complement each other. Now, why should we take a mantra from a master? Why not we do it by ourselves? You can read any book and take a mantra. But see, when a sound is pronounced, it's not just the sound. Along with the sound, the consciousness also moves. Have you experienced Someone may say some words, but somebody else, they say it and when they say it, you can feel it also. <coughs> See, when you, when you go in the plane, air hostess will say welcome or goodbye and that goodbye they are saying, it's same goodbye. But it's not the same goodbye again. <laughs> 
as your close friend who says goodbye to you when they see you off the plane. Do you see that? You are an officer somewhere and your subordinate says hello or greets you. That is so hypocritical. He really doesn't greet from the heart. It's just surface greeting. Hello, are you? Oh, very good, I'm glad you are here, whatever. But somebody else with sincerely from their heart, heartfelt thanks, they, they, they tell you, thank you very much. Maybe you gave them a glass of water. You can feel the difference. So it's not just the mantra, the consciousness behind the mantra, which makes the mantra powerful. <coughs> I tell you a small story. Once a disciple was with the master and the master had asked him to do some meditation, gave him a mantra. The disciple was doing that mantra. And once he went to the town and the town people had gathered and when they were talking, they... Many of them said, Ram, Ram, they said, oh, many of them said, Ram, Ram. They are singing also. The disciple said, oh, see, what is this? My Guruji gave me the same mantra and said, it's very precious, don't tell anybody. Now I come here, everybody is saying the same mantra. <coughs> that means he must have cheated me. So he goes back to the master and tells him, what, you, are, you gave me the mantra Ram Ram and I see that everybody is saying Ram Ram in the town. That singing is nothing special. I have been here in your ashram working day and night, <laughs> toiling. You have cheated me, it is a way to be, you should give me something special. Some extraordinary, something special mantra. It's so common, everybody says. I came to know from people that everybody says this mantra. The master just smiled, okay. You do one thing before you come to any conclusion. You take this stone and go and ask the price of this stone with various people in the town, and then come to me. The disciple agreed half willingly, all right, one more thing I'll do, finish it. I think this is not my place, I have to move from here. <laughs> enough is enough, he has done to me, I have had enough, I am going. I am living. This is outrageous. <laughs> Five years of toiling and thinking something secret, some great sound I have and it is nothing. So this man, the boy said, all right, let me do one last thing. And so he goes with that stone and he asks some, a vegetable vendor. Vegetable vendor looks at the stone, he says, Oh, it's nice, I can use it for weight, weighing. So the vegetable vendor offered him, Okay, I'll give you three kilos of okra for this. <laughs> <coughs> or potatoes, two kilos of potatoes. And the boy said, All right. I mean, he was just asked to find out the praise, not to give it to anybody. So he said, no, no, I won't give it. So he took it away and goes further and goes to another merchant in a, st in a store, shows him, I'll give the stone, how much would you give? That man takes the stone and says, okay, this seems very nice, looks very special, looks very charming and feels very nice. Okay, I'll give you maybe twenty kilos of sugar and ten kilos of rice. How about that? Now, this boy was a little baffled. Where is two kilos of potatoes and where is ten kilos of sugar? Seemed to be doing good, he felt good, okay. But he didn't. 
gave the stone and he took the stone and moved. Went to a cloth merchant. A cloth merchant looked at it and said, Oh, this is nice, I can keep it as a paper white. He said, Okay, I'll give you ten meters of silk cloth for you. Boy was getting a little more confused. He said, What is the real value of this stone? Everybody, whomsoever he shows, everybody wants to have it. And they are quoting their own price. He goes further into a jewellery shop, jeweller looks at it, he offers him, okay, I, you give this, I will give you 200,000 rupees, two lakhs of rupees. Now this really threw the boy off. Where is two kilos of potatoes and where is two lakhs of rupees, 200,000 rupees. And now, then, because the master had told him not to give, he said, he got a little greedy now. He said, okay, let me go and ask more jewellers. So he went to another jeweller and the price went up, and another jeweller, price went up. And finally he went to another jeweller, the last one he met, seemed to be a very wise man. He took the stone, he said, okay, forget about it, this is mine now. No. Says, whosoever gave you this stone, I'll go and service, do service to them, to him. And I'll give you all my wealth, you take my shop away. Just this stone is good enough for me. But the boy knew that he cannot give it away. So he took the stone, went to the master and narrated the story. Master said, see, that is it. Whoever could see the value of it, and the last man whom he met knew that all the power of the master was stored in the stone and was given to him. He said, did this stone, I can create many such shops, why one business? I can create hundred business. I have the power to bless now. What is big? To create many business are stuck with one business, managing one business. But it was the same stone. The Master says, see, it may be the same Ram Ram mantra, but from where you take it? With how do you take it? Matters. With the mantra comes the energy. Mantra is just like a capsule. Inside the capsule is something that is unseen. Hmm. This is called Shakti Path. Shakti Path means either by sight or by touch or by mantra. Transfer a little energy as much as one can hold so that they can go deeper and explore and become that. You know, in hand pump, sometimes when the water doesn't come, when there is a air block, what we do, you know? You put some water from the top. When you put water from the top, then when you start pumping, it sucks the water, then the water goes, comes. But that is all, is the work of mantra. Mantra is just given so that you are able to get in touch with the source that you are already. You don't have to go around stealing energy here and there. This is another paranoia. The people think, oh, I want to get energy from there, energy from where do you? Just relax. <laughs> and relax, you are energy, you are source of energy. Huh. But these mantras and meditation and satsangs, chanting, all these help you to elevate. To elevate, huh? So that is the value of mantra. Have you noticed, you know, many of you have been in some satsangs or bhajans or heard even bhajans in the cassettes. 
but you don't feel that. No? You don't feel the same, right? Isn't it? Even if you sing out of tune in satsang, it's much better than some <laughs> recorded something. It depends on, on the life behind a sound. That is what is Rishi. Rishi means whose sound, words, are followed by the meaning. The meaning directly gets translated into heart. Say peace, and the word peace carries peace behind it. You hear the word peace, and then you are peaceful immediately. Hmm? Good, 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 good. Now we'll see some from this question and answer. My mind is hyperactive and I have got used to doing and thinking of many things at the same time. This makes me feel overloaded and I am many times distracted while talking to people. I try to slow down but can't. Thank you. And slip back into the old ha habit of office work. Office workload is heavy. Please guide me. Jager it up. You know, when you think a work is a load, it becomes even more. The unwillingness to do a work makes the work be big load on you. It could be a small job, still you will feel it's load. Resistance to a work makes the work appear as too big or enormous or tiring. You have capacity to do much more. <coughs> do you know something? Just you go and ask a pune or a watchman working in a bank, do you have time? You know what he says? No time. Where is time? I get only one holiday, Sunday. On that day I have to wash my clothes, take my children out in go to grocery and buy grocery things, this, 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 this. He's so busy, he says, I have no time at all. Every day, more, eight hours I work, come back tired, I have to cook, and do this, 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 this. All the jobs. And one holiday he has to visit his friend, relative, somebody comes, something, something, something. He's so busy. You ask the manager of the bank, he's even more busy. And the Prime Minister of this country is even more busy. It's same 24 hours, but right from Prime Minister to the pure, nobody has time. But see the work a Prime Minister does and the pure of an office does. Do you see what I'm saying? You make time. You can have time. Don't feel work is big load. 
Just know your capacity is much more than that. When you feel a work, a big load, you are underestimating your capacity, your capability. Do you see what I'm saying? A pune could be a Prime Minister. A pune only have to know that he has a lot of time, that he can do much more. Hmm? And more pressed for time you are, deeper rest you must take, and more essential is meditation. Usually I think people who do not have anything to do, they can sit and meditate. I tell you, it's a wrong notion. It is like saying somebody who doesn't have to go to the market can keep all the money. What is the use? The lot of money for what? They don't, they don't have anything to do in the market. And one who goes to the market, he needs to have money. Isn't it? person who has to go to market and buy things, he needs more money than someone who never goes to market. So pers a person who doesn't take any responsibility, doesn't have to do much, does not also have to meditate. What he will do with all the energy in meditation? And one who has lot of work to do, if he meditates half an hour, he can recoup himself and work. So work and rest, they are opposite, yet they are very complementary. So never mind, you have capacity, so the work is there. And skillfully do it, rest, meditate, be on the courses more often. It will all be taken care. No? Yeah, there is another question that says, why to keep a mantra secret? <coughs> you know, that which is secret takes you more inside. All that which you express takes you outside. Expression. That's why it is expression. Now, here mantra is a sound we are using to go inward. You know, when psychologists say, if you have something in mind, just speak it out, so it's all clear from the mind. You feel free about it. Just speak out and let it go. Any worry, trouble, botherations you have. The same thing is true for the mind to go deeper, to probe into deeper levels of subconscious, unconscious mind, a mantra need to be kept secret. There is a big difference in the thinking about secret in the Oriental and in the Occidental. In the East, whatever is secret is sacred. The common notion in the West is something secret is deceptive or of shame. If you have to be shame, feel shame about something, then you keep it secret. Is it? Something kept secret is it's shameful. But here it's not so. The secret is connected with sacredness, something precious, something beautiful, something beyond words, beyond the field of expression. Science try to reveal the secrets and dharma, religion, respects and regards the secrets. This is the main difference. Secret is synthesis. Science is analysis. Probe into the secrets of the world. You dissect, bisect, try to know. And the more you try to know, the more remains unknown. 
That's why the mysteries of this world can never be fully unfolded. The more you unfold it, the more mysterious it becomes. And that is why it is beautiful. If all the mystery in the world disappear, then you will see all the religion will also disappear. Religion means not the so-called religion, but the spiritual aspiration will also disappear. Spiritual path is honoring the secret and moving into the mysteries of this universe. And the greatest mystery is yourself. And even greater mystery is love. That's what you are. My beloved Guruji, I am quite emotional and sensitive at heart, but I can't express my emotions always to others. And because of this, people do misunderstand me at times. Please help me, Gurudev, in solving the problem. Gratefully yours and love you very, very, very much. Yeah, people mistake you because you cannot express. I tell you, all that is valuable cannot be expressed at all. If someone just believes in your expression or they express what they have understood about you, then you are also mistaken. You misunderstand that they have misunderstood you. <coughs> Do you get what I am saying? You think others have misunderstood you because you have misunderstood <coughs> them. By long explanation and talks, things doesn't get cleared actually. It may become a little clear. Just for passing time you can do that, sit and talk. <laughs> but I tell you, our life, our emotions are far beyond <coughs> speech, far beyond any expressions. How do you express? Just look at somebody, shake hands with them, hug them, congratulate them, or give them some sweets, whatever you do. <coughs> Anything you do, will be very small, very tiny. That is why you always feel that you cannot express yourself. If you could feel that you could express yourself totally, I tell you, you have not lived life fully. Anyone whose life has some depth will always feel, I could not express myself fully. And that is right. You are on the right track. You are much deeper, you are much bigger, you are much vaster. So don't worry about it. And people's understanding and misunderstandings are never permanent. You think somebody has understood you too well, and in a few days or even few hours you find them behave in a very different manner. Baffling manner, you do not understand. Oh, what happened to this person? It's so good a few, few hours ago. He knew me so well. What happened to him? Or she, he, she knew me so well. What happened to her? Isn't it? So people who understand, then they turn around and misunderstand. And people who have misunderstood you, just go a little deep into them, they have really understood you. There is understanding there also. Isn't it? So don't be bothered much about it. You know, best is, if you find somebody has misunderstood, educate and ignore. These are two words you must remember. 
Just ignoring is no good, that's arrogance. I'm just trying to educate and see whether they have got it is also no good. Because then you put all your strength to make them understand that never happens. So these two should go hand in hand. Should educate and... Do you get it? Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari Bol Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari Bol